Now in this last part, we've got to justify by further differentiation that the value of L that we've got is a minimum. The value of L that we got in the last part was 54. And I showed you a sketch of the graph. But remember, we've got to assume that we haven't got the sketch in front of us. We've just got to prove that this point here is a minimum by differentiation. And there's essentially two ways that we can do this. We could draw up a table looking at the gradient, or we could use the second differential. I'll show you both methods in this video clip, but we'll start then with the second differential method, where we differentiate dl by dx again with respect to x. So if we carry on from where we left off, we've got that therefore d2l by dx squared equals, and if we differentiate the 12, well that goes to 0. If we differentiate minus 3, 2, 4, x to the minus 3, multiply minus 3, 2, 4 with the minus 3, and take 1 away from the power. That's going to give us 972 x to the power minus 4. And it's best to rewrite this then as 972 times 1 over x to the power 4, which is 972 all divided by x to the power 4. Now, this gives us the rate of change of gradient. And what we do is we substitute in the value that we're testing, and that value is x equals 3. And when we do that, let's just come down here, when we do that, substitute x equals 3 into here, what do we actually get? Well, d2l by dx squared equals 972 then divided by 3 to the power 4. And what it comes out is uh, as is 12. And 12 is a value that is greater than 0. And that indicates that we've got a minimum point. That's because, just as a quick reminder, we're measuring the rate of change of gradient as we move from left to right in the direction of x increasing. And what you've got is, say, a negative gradient here, going to zero, going to a positive gradient. So as you can see, the gradient is increasing as we go around here. That's why we've got greater than zero a positive value. So therefore, what we have is that L is a min when x equals 3. And that's one way then that I would suggest you do it. Another way though is the gradient table method. And to do something like that, what we'll do is we'll just rule that off there. But it's to draw up a table, something along these kind of lines. And we've got x here, and we're testing at the point where x is 3. And we take a point either side of the 3, say 2 and 4. And what we do is we work out the gradient at these points. We know the gradient when x is 3. When x is 3, we know that the gradient is 0. But what is the gradient when x equals 2? Well, we just got to substitute x equals 2 into dl by dx, this equation here. It might be easier to just substitute in as 12 minus 324 over x cubed. But if you do do that, you should find that you get a negative value. In fact, that value turns out to be minus 28.5. But you get a negative value. Let's just put that as a minus value, negative. And what that means is that if we consider the slope, a negative gradient means that the graph is coming down. We've already seen that at x equals 3, the gradient is 0, so that's horizontal. What is it at x equals 4? Well, if we substitute x equals 4 into dl by dx, this equation here, then 
When you do 12 minus 324 over x cubed, x being 4, you should find you get a positive value, 6.9375. A positive value. And a positive value indicates that the gradient is going upwards. So you can see that what we have here is essentially the bottom part of this graph. So if we hadn't sketched this graph here, you'd have seen that the curve comes round something like this, okay, where these points are the tangents to the curve. So from this we could say again that therefore L is a min when x equals 3. So you've got two methods then and uh, hope you've been able to follow that. All right.